black metal bass lesson part two. We're gonna dive more into creating bass parts. So all of the examples that I'm gonna be using in this video, tabs for all of these songs are in my book, Abyssal Scriptures Unleashed, which you can get from my Bandcamp. So I picked three things to feature in this video. The first of which is from my band, Oreshkigal's End Part One. There's one piece from my song, Unlike Mortal Existence. And there's also gonna be something from five more types of black metal guitar riffs. So let's start off with the Oreshkigal one. So the first part. So this is utilizing the E harmonic minor scale because I'm playing a low E, another higher E here, seventh fret on A, and then the sharpened seventh, which is the note of D sharp. And the reason why this works is because the guitar is just playing an E minor chord. So you can use the E harmonic minor scale when the guitars are playing an E minor chord. And that's a very, very important tip there. And then the guitars move down to the C minor chord. And now I'm going to use a part of the C minor scale. And what I'm doing is emphasizing some of the chord tones. So a root, a minor third and a perfect fifth are the key components to making a minor chord. I'm playing the root note here, C, third fret on A, and I'm adding this type of melody. And what I'm doing there is I'm playing the fifth of the chord, which is a G note, so C, G, back to C, and then I'm playing this, this D sharp again, or in the case of C minor, it would be an E flat. E flat and D sharp are exactly the same thing, so don't get too confused with the terminology. Now, the cool thing about finishing on this E flat note here is that it's a fifth higher from the next chord, which is an A flat minor or a G sharp minor, same thing. Now, I'm using the same kind of idea that I use for the C minor, but a little bit differently. So I'm playing a flat, B, back to A flat, and then finishing on the E flat. Again, going over some of the chord tones, playing the root, the minor third, and the perfect fifth, but in this kind of order, root, minor third, root, fifth. And then that leads us quite nicely a you know, big sinking kind of sound. And then I'm just playing the fifth there because again, the guitar parts are playing F minor. So I'm playing F and the perfect fifth of the chord. And that was your idea behind the Oreshkigal bass because the guitar parts, it's very easy to write bass parts when the guitars are just playing effectively four chords, you know, just held chords, not too much movement in the guitars because it leaves so much room for the bass. And you can add like all of these cool little melodies included in the guitar part. Because I could have easily just gone. But it's really bland. I really like the kind of moving and the slithering in between in the chords. And I quite like how there's lots of notes in between some of the chords as well. Of course, you can make it more technical, um, but I, th I felt in this scenario, it was just right. You know, just a little bit of movement just to keep things moving, slithering, keep something interesting in the ear as well. So that's Arash Google in part one. Let's move on to the next example, which is from Unlike Mortal Existence. Normally the song's in C standard, but for this purpose, I've played it in E standard. There's a lot more going on with the guitars and I'll show you what I did with the bass. So 
So that's a very technical riff. A normal A minor triad just contains notes A, C, and E. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the pull off on the A string between the notes E to C, and then moving back to A, then up to C. So you're basically going but in a cooler way on the guitars. Now the bass parts, of course, that's a massive stretch and it's very, very hard to keep tight. And all I'm doing is emphasizing some of the chord tones. The perfect fifth of an A minor chord is E. Then you go down to the A, which is the root. And then I'm playing the minor third. And the guitars are doing, and the guitars are doing a kind of dissection inspired hammer on pull off legato. It's kind of based around the G major dyad. So there I'm just playing the major third right at the end of that little line. So even though the bass is doing something completely different to the guitars, it still interconnects. The reason why is because I'm accentuating the chord tones on which the little riffs on the guitar are based from. And then moving on, the guitars are doing this. Which is a kind of E Phrygian style F chord movement. A little bit technical, but the easiest way to think of it is an F chord. You go through some of the notes. And then you just flatten the fifth. I could follow the guitars. I could have just followed the guitars with the bass, but I didn't want to. I wanted the guitars to shine through and the bass to be really kind of locked in with the drums and not taking away from the technical parts of the guitar because it can get a bit muddy if all the guitars especially with the bass is playing like a super technical thing so i'm just playing the f then i'm emphasizing the end of the pedal note on the guitar which is going now if i do that on bass you know it's very easy for it to sound messy again so the way i did it was just by playing the emphasized notes on the pedal riff, which is the B and the C. So that whole riff. And then the next time around, I finish the riff on just the open E because the guitars again are doing a fast legato run. I don't want to take away from that. I want the bass to be really there, rock solid, tight with the drums. On that guitar run, it doesn't start on the root note of the scale. It starts on the second of the scale, the second note of the scale, the F sharp. And that's the run. But because I've got this bass playing in E, it kind of just forms chords each time harmonically. And it makes the listener very aware of exactly where the key is. Because this, this riff moves between E Phrygian and E natural minor. And the only difference between the two is that the natural minor scale has the F sharp, but the Phrygian has a natural F. But again, moving around between scales and knowing what notes work with which chord is even more important than learning the scales, uh, because using your ears and learning the notes is more important than learning scale shapes. Then the riff just repeats again at the end of the riff. There's that little tail part on the guitar, the den and -an, and I wanted to have that on bass because it's a really nice transition into the next part of the song. So the entire bass part. The bass is moving with the guitars, it's melodic, it's, it's catchy as well. There's a groove to it. And, that, and I think that's really, really important when writing bass parts, especially with like a kind of bouncy riff like this. You know, you want the bass to kind of work with it and not copy it too much. Um, because I think the guitar should have its own identity and I think the bass should have its own identity as well. And now let's move on to the final example.
So again, I'm just utilizing the chords and scales, kind of combining the two. This has so much room for the bass, and it's very easy for something to be too complicated, but for this example, I wanted it to be really simple and really effective. So that little riff there. The guitars are playing the C minor chord and I'm playing the first few notes of the C minor scale. C, D and E flat. I could have just played the root notes. But I like the movement where the notes go up and then it has a bigger gap between the notes, a bigger interval from here, this E flat. It adds more tension and it has a much nicer resolve. And that little bit of tension just adds a bit more kind of weight into the next note. And again, adding some tension, adding some movement in there as well. You can easily just play root notes, but I wanted to, again, take that same idea of playing the first three notes of the scale. And then again, it gives us a nice jump because this note here is a G, the perfect fifth above C. And that gives a really cool transition into the next part, that heavy C note. That part there, that's one of the only times where I just wanted to leave the E note ringing because there's a drum fill. And that drum fill is really cool. I wanted to make the drum fill the standout section of that bar. And then in the repeat, So there is a little bit of a different idea. And then what I'm doing there instead, instead of playing minor scales, I'm playing diminished scales. So I'm moving up the C diminished movement. And there I'm using the notes F sharp and E flat here for a bit more kind of evilness and more tension. Cause I wanted it to be more evil. I wanted more tension this time. I wanted something even more unsettling. And then I quite like this sinking effect. Back to the C and it's following a diminished scale or maybe even a diminished chord. And here's the chord. And you can use these ideas like the guitars are playing the E. So again, you're getting more unsettling sounds with both instruments. And then, because it's a kind of like a chuggy ducka ducka part, you want it to be tight. So it's quite important to know when to keep something tight and when to keep something technical and when to hold back sometimes. So yeah, that's bass lesson part two. All of the tabs are in my book, Abyssal Scriptures Unleashed, available on my Bandcamp. Uh, links are below. And stay tuned for more chaos.